Plague of Justinian by Jeremy Sparks The Plague of Justinian, named after the Byzantine Empire, was considered the first of three threatening epidemics of man and was one of the most important turning points for history. The plague originated in the Mediterranean port of Pelusium, located in Egypt. In 541 AD, it spread throughout the entire domain and approximately 30 million people had lost their lives by 542 AD. The Justinian Plague lasted over two centuries and spread across several continents. The purpose of uh, this PowerPoint is to inform the, uh, the viewer about the first life-threatening plague to man and to review what facts we know about the plague overall. The first outbreak of the Justinian Plague was in 541 AD, and the last reported outbreak of the plague was reported in modern-day Syria in 781 AD. The article, Earthquakes and Plague During Byzantine Times, claims that the rat flea index changes when natural disasters occur. When natural disasters occur, history has shown us that the pandemic follows short behind. The Rhone population unexplainably shot through the roof after several natural disasters afflicted Byzantine during 571 AD, and rats have a direct link to this plague. <clears throat> Being that rats have increased in population, caused the disease to sustain for decades, and in some cases, even centuries. The average interval between outbreaks and repeating location was around 14 to 15 years, varying based on the location. The plague is widely believed to be the same as the bubonic plague and similar to the modern day plague. However, certain information from Justinian plague Hagiography and monasticism suggest that the plague could have been a different disease than Ursina pestis, deadly cockabacillus, such as flu or the influenza virus. <clears throat> Even though the possibility remains that the first pandemic could have been something other than Ursina pestis, scientists are not certain that a similar or identical virus was at hand that caused the death of millions of people. Plague of Justinian spread in 541 AD in Egypt. Sixteen years later, the city of Constantinople suffered from a powerful earthquake on December 14th. The preceding months had led to the epidemic, which had struck the city in 558 AD. The plague originated in China, however, and was able to migrate due to trade routes such as the Silk Road. The Rhone spread the disease to humans all around the world. The disease spread mostly when the infected would travel to a new city or when the healthy would travel to an infected city. On average, a city would go 14 years between the plague outbreaks and a natural disaster would commonly occur close before. The places that were hit the worst were coastal cities, and there is a theory that the disease spread by sea. However, it is slim and unconvincing due to the uh, fact that there were spots in between England and Italy that were not affected and if this theory is true then all these towns would be affected since most long distance trade when it existed was done by coasting. There should not have been disease free areas at all between the British Isles and the Mediterranean Basin if the seaborne trade hypothesis is correct. That's quoted from Justinian's Plague, Hagiography, and Monasticism. The amount of countries and people affected by this plague spanned over several continents and caused a copious amount of people's grief and pain. Using historical social epidemiology, we are able to analyze patterns in the disease and we are able to follow its path. The disease originated in China and spread out among Europe and parts of Africa. Four cities had interesting outbreaks during the 6th to 8th century include Constantinople, Syria, Antioch, and Palestine. A few months following the large earthquake in 557 AD, Constantinople broke out an epidemic, resulting in loss of 25 million people. The city had intervals of outbreak every 11 to 17 years. 580 AD, Antioch, a city in Syria, had suffered from an earthquake and resulted in the third outbreak of the first plague. It took a thir 38 years before the disease re-emerged to claim more lives. In 634 AD, the fourth outbreak occurred in Palestine, 
after several earthquakes, resulting in many monuments being destroyed. Thirty days later, the plague had begun to spread. An example of what types of people were affected by the plague of Justinian would be the Venerable Bede. When Bede was 15 years old, the plague had hit his home monastery, located in Wehrmacht, resulting in 40% of the monks dying of it. Another example will include Wighard's expedition to Rome in order to be named Archbishop of England. <clears throat> it didn't matter who you were or where you were, everyone was susceptible to the plague. Using modern science, we've been able to find out much more on this pandemic and can use information gathered from the past to use in today's medicine. The scientist uh, in Yersina Pestis and the Plague of Justinian, a genomic analysis, dig up two bodies, subjects A120 and A76, from the early medieval Aschheim Bajuwaring Cemetery in Germany, and observe their cellular tissue, their bones, their teeth, etc., to find out more about this vastly unknown plague. Using radiocarbon dating, scientists were able to pin the bodies to 533 and 504 AD. <clears throat> they are quoted saying, We identified SMPs specific to Justinian samples using Genios at five times read coverage and 90% variant frequency in free bays. At 23 at five times read covering 90% variant frequencies with the parameters use mapping quality, exclude unobserved genotypes, alternate LL frequency, ploidy of 1, minimum mapping quality of 20, minimum base quality of 20, exclude multiple nucleotide variants, no complex evidence, no endows, and disabled population priors. This they discovered Samples they dug up identify the high frequencies in contemporary European and Middle Eastern populations. Through the use of these two bodies, scientists have found that some forms of protein have increased resistance to the form of the virus that this certain plague was. The plague of Justinian was the first pandemic of man who was, was, was responsible for the transition from the Classical Era to the Middle Ages. The information gathered here is a useful tool in understanding pandemics and patterns that precede and follow them. In order to understand more recent pandemics and how to predict future ones before they happen, we must study the past thoroughly and look for reoccurring events. Hands down, we must use this medieval problem and disasters to answer our modern day questions.